Guys, we have Ujan here today. Um, completely unscripted, but uh, I love his illustration styles. He has a very, very unique illustration style, something that, you know, I, I'm actually going through his um, profile. Um, Ujan has exhibited his illustrations work in the Habitat Center New Delhi and at the China Art Museum in Shanghai. I'm just reading it out from his Behance profile. I'm very sure he has more to add to this. Um, he's a self-taught designer. I think he, has, uh, he comes from a literature background, if I'm not wrong, Ujan. Uh, so, there you go. I will not waste time speaking anymore. Ujan, up to you. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, so should I just like start with the presentation or should I just like... Yeah, I'll, yeah. Okay, I'll just... Uh, uh, right, so much like Aubrey said, I studied in Delhi, at Delhi University. Post which I started working with an events company called uh, Teamwork, and I have worked there for about six odd years. And uh, now I do a bunch of consulting work for um, Oxfam India, uh, Teamwork Art. Uh, I do some consulting work for the uh, United Nations Foundation in the US. Um, and uh, but honestly, that. Uh, or most of that stuff is all very, very drab and boring generic graphic design work. So I won't get into that. I will show you some few more exciting things that are more pertinent to um, illustration and graphic design and what that means uh, in today's day and age and how uh, it's, uh, it's an added medium for uh, sort of uh, exploring a new way of like trying to um, enhance the communication that you want to show. So uh, without any delays, I will just get into uh, sharing something that I've put together yesterday. And uh, so, so just off the top of my head, just like, um, please bear with me because there may be a lot of things and I might go a little quickly. So I'm just gonna like um, start and if you have any questions, we'll we'll take that at the end. And uh, okay, so hi, as you can see, um, when I started out, uh, sort of uh, dabbling in illustration work and painting work, it was I think around 2009, and uh, and um, I sort of uh, I remember when I finished school, I worked on a project for NDTV Good Times, where they wanted me to um, illustrate this the the story of Kumbh Mela and how that sort of um, worked in terms of a mythological study and uh, and till up until that point I hadn't really studied anything to do with mythology and uh, I had essentially just only read bits and pieces of like abridged versions of Ramayana and Mahabharata which we do in school and uh, that's about it so um, so I had no idea actually what I what the possibilities were of like uh, actually getting into something like this. And once I started working on it, I kind of uh, got more into it and like um, then decided to sort of enhance this kind of almost fine arty illustrative painting style and then take that into my sort of um, into my let's say visual communication career as it were. So I'm just going to go through. Um, some of my early work and uh, it, it doesn't really have any kind of uh, sort of uh, temporal sequence so I'll go back to like 2009 all the way till now and then go back again to where I started working um, professionally so okay, so here we go so this is like uh, where it started I mean painting and beyond this is just the beginning of one started how one starts with like drawing things they like doodling that kind of stuff and once I got this project, like I said, I started working on different kinds of characters and trying to see how I could uh, sort of, you know, build this um, sort of roster of like people, uh, places, um, just putting together some ideas of how things could sort of be put together. And uh, which led me to sort of start working on this series, which was loosely based on uh, one, one half of the series was a series on Ravan and the other half of the series was based on Shiva. And um, when I started doing that, it sort of 
it worked for me in a sense that uh, not only did I enjoy the medium, I also enjoyed kind of um, going through the motions of like trying out different varieties of how I could, you know, show these things and uh, and that's where it kind of took off and then um, and then got into sort of like uh, creating different kinds of areas and landscapes and things like that. And uh, that's where it kind of uh, sort of made sense for me to kind of uh, broaden the broaden the horizon as it were. So when I realized that I reached the stage where uh, I wanted to, uh, I was sort of done with just like two characters and you know, one um, in itself is like discovering new things and you want to add new characters to a world you're building. Uh, you try and sort of uh, get in, you really get into the research of how these things work and like, um, you know, study other artists or like, you know, study actual mythology and strips and text and how that sort of works in terms of like, um, in terms of economics, sociology, so many different things like that. And uh, that led me to start sort of what that, a yeah? different world for, and um, sort of adding to just the number of characters that I had. So, and uh, what essentially happened was I started experimenting with different styles, different landscapes, different textures of like uh, things that I could uh, get involved with. Um, and here are some of these examples. These were again all sort of paintings I did between like 2000, maybe 11 to now. So these are some of the earlier ones and then you can see this progression of things that are happening where I started kind of building a series where um, I was, I'm sort of trying to do a series where uh, it's a depiction of uh, every Indian mythological sort of deity which is associated with a Vahan as it were in mythology and um, showing that kind of correlation or juxtaposition between how it's like a how they're both sort of uh, co coexistent um, beings with each other and uh, something like that. So, um, so here are some more examples. Uh, there, there were more characters as I went on and on with trying to sort of uh, build my style. And uh, this is interesting. I mean, so as you can see, the one on the on the left is something that I did a, a year apart from like the one on the right. So again, that's kind of like where I was at that time um, and kind of sort of just trying to like figure out what I could add that would make it different. And I thought, hey, you know, animals are a great way to kind of go about it because they in, in themselves um, in mythology have their own characteristics and their own kind of um, uh, way of, you know, being depicted and stuff like that. So it was an interesting journey. It sort of, uh, it took a while to kind of get here. Uh, and practice and a lot of like sleepless nights and sort of generally uh, painstakingly slow uh, hours of doing all sorts of uh, random research and things but I ultimately got there and um, and essentially that uh, sort of um, uh, paved the way for me to kind of explore uh, different kinds of avenues of painting and try and see how I could do a mixture between something that's very sort of minimal and something that's very dense and uh, try and work around it from there so i think it i think it uh, i think it worked and then i think i enjoyed uh, working with monotones and um it just it just helped me like get these characters kind of pop against maybe like like a dark background and you see this one flash of blue or red or green or something and uh, it really draws your eye to it so um Okay, so now uh, going back now, uh, back from 2020 to uh, 2012, I um, I had an exhibition of mine at the India Habitat Center wherein I met uh, a man named uh, Sanjoy Roy. And for those of you who don't know what Sanjoy looks like, he is essentially, if I had to describe him, he's uh, um, India's India's answer to the guy from Tiger King. Um, he looks like that, but uh, he is essentially a festival producer. He runs a company called Teamwork Art. They do festivals all over India and abroad. And he met me, and he sort of said that you know now that you've finished your college, do you have any plans for for, for the studies and what do you want to do? So I said uh, I'm not sure. And at which point I had sort of 
uh, graduated and wasn't really sure where I was going and was sort of just like taking it as it comes sort of thing. And uh, at which point um, I was introduced to teamwork via a common friend um, and uh, I worked there for a bit. And then it was almost a month later that I realized that, uh, that Sanjay also realized that uh, we, we worked at the same place and he was more than thrilled to have me on board. And that's kind of where the journey began. Um, I want to just like go back though before I show any of my teamwork work. This is something that uh, it's just it just shows sort of how uh, illustration as a style sort of has a beginning, and when you're not fully sure of how you want to show yourself, you just try and do the best you can with to the best of your abilities at that at that time. And uh, at that point, I kind of sort of uh, I really enjoyed working with lines, with simple lines. Um, I found it. Uh, effective therapeutic and this is one of the earlier projects I did so, with a friend of mine uh, and I sort of took that forward into you know making that transition from working with like paints and colors to um, you know colors on a screen gradients background uh, layers that kind of thing and uh, this is something I did for uh, Adobe uh, they have a specific uh, survey for how they see uh, creatives and they do every year they do a, a sort of an analysis of like uh, how each country uh, uses their uh, creative um, whether it's like digital media or like new media or whatever it is um, so we have done some illustrations for them and uh, this is uh, this is a this is just a country illustrations that were there in the presentation um, so I got used to sort of uh, trying out new kinds of styles and uh, putting together different kinds of like uh, colors with textures, that's something that was new to me. So actually my first, the first teamwork project which uh, where I sort of, which sort of let me use illustration where I had the idea that we could use illustration to kind of, you know, bring out uh, a music festival into a different character and uh, sort of have that speak for itself in its own kind of, um, in its own kind of like uh, way to, uh, you know, give it its own flavor of feel in the sense. Uh, uh, so it was introduced me to uh, uh, using innovation and using it effectively in a way which I would in later years apply to like the Apple Literature Festival, for example. And this was fun. This was a music festival, uh, went on for a few days. Um, and as you can see now that how it kind of worked is that we had this sort of master creative. I'm just going to go back up for a second. We had this master creative, which you can see on the right. And uh, what we did was we kind of took that master creative and then broke it down into bits. So we didn't actually have to use all of it all the time. And uh, we sort of tried to sort of use it smartly with like, like give its own space, but at the same time leaving enough room to have typography uh, interact with it and uh, make it look a little more exciting. Uh, right, so I'm going to move now into, these are some book covers that I've been doing. And book covers, as everybody knows, are a great way for like uh, illustration to kind of take the forefront of, you know, something that can be, that can sort of enhance a book cover where it's required in the sense that um, it, it's not always that you find it's very different when you sort of uh, find a photograph that you want to just uh, use and then you don't, you don't have that specific uh, visual or uh, person's face in a, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a realistic way that you can portray. So having fun with like fictitious places or like uh, fantasy characters and stuff like that. and uh, uh, Ujan, that's, Ujan, that's something that uh, I sort of Ujan, yeah. your network is down your, your voice is breaking can you hear me now is yeah that better yeah. yeah okay so yeah so um, so again so like a lot of these book covers initially I started with uh, doing a lot of stuff with uh, just simple line work and adding color to it and uh, it helped me uh, sort of use it in the sense that I could uh, create a world which was very busy 
and had layers to it and had different stories to it. So um, even the one on uh, the right, for example, and Biguti Machine was a sci-fi novel, um, which was set in uh, a dystopian, almost uh, semi-West Bengal kind of feel to it. So it had, it had some textures of an old city and then a few layers of a new kind of uh, metropolis, which is there in the background. So it was an interesting way to kind of, um, you know, add the contrast in the same kind of illustration and make it seem like they're two different places. And the same thing on 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 the on the on the left is the sharp knife of memory, where on one side there's um, there are fewer lines, and then the other side there are more lines, and then there's one visual and then many visuals, and then you sort of have a a nice sort of um, parallel between the two. Uh, so I'm going to move on, and uh, I, in fact, at this stage, um, also sort of dabbled in a lot of children's work, children's book work, which was fun. It was interesting in terms of uh, the genre itself, and um, and it was an interesting uh, way for me to kind of do other kind of projects, which uh, which which had uh, uh, content for kids, because because while while it's uh, while there is a sense of uh, innocence in terms of um, what a child reads, uh, the limitation uh, there is no there is really no limitation in terms of the imaginative process, and uh, one really could take um, take uh, take the idea of music and just turn it into various different uh, sort of uh, subgenres within that same sort of illustration. So even though there was uh, there were different instruments like uh, piano and violin and xylophone, each one had its own kind of look and feel to it. And uh, I was lucky that the author actually sort of um, got in touch with me. Uh, this is a lady in Hong Kong, and she wanted to do a series. And um, at the beginning, we sort of decided that we needed each series to look distinctly sort of unique and um, that was interesting because uh, you need to really like uh, look plan ahead in terms of how you want to sort of lay out something that has a serialized effect to it because uh, you don't want everything to look similar but at the same time everything has to uh, come from that same home family of uh, characterization and uh, so this was the first book and this is the second book where there's Chinese classical music. So now you can see that uh, the textures, the patterns, the colors um, all become distinctly more like uh, East Asian. And uh, that sort of permeated into the pages as well, where there are, uh, where, whether it's a background or a character or um, even the texture itself of like, you know, tables, chairs, uh, people's clothes. Continue uh, Chinese, um, and these are a few of the pages from the book, uh, which are now sort of sitting somewhere in some bookshop in Hong Kong. I sort of worked really well and, and gave everything this kind of like a uh, glow and it was fun to sort of uh, work on these sort of circus characters and um, and uh, ultimately the series looked look, look good on its own in the sense that I think uh, it was fun because we I think set out to achieve what we wanted to in making three distinct uh, properties but one entire sort of uh, look to the same sort of character. Um, uh there's something wrong with the uh Ujana, am I I back? network is slightly acting up um okay uh because we're working now? there was a time where there was a time when we couldn't say anything like in the middle it was completely frozen uh but that's okay, all right that's so all right which, please so, continue okay. it's all right but it was okay so um in, uh, about so so actually it was great to kind of uh work of a body of work which sort of 
led me to have three distinct books uh, but uh, sort of were the same sort of product and uh, and working on a series really like gives you that uh, freedom to kind of try and see if you how you can find the sort of um, correlation between all the conceptualization that you've done between each book uh, so now i'm going to move on to another kid book which i did this was one of my favorite ones which i did for penguin and uh, this is an example because i wanted to talk about how um, illustration as a process isn't something that is really set in stone you may have different uh, ideas you may have different thoughts of illustration for uh, each book and it may undergo various sort of changes before you actually arrive at a final thing uh, of course the one on the left is what it finally looks like but uh, i'm going to show you how it sort of progressed in terms of an evolution the one on uh, the image on the right is something that was an early concept for what the book cover should be which is uh, basically uh, gatod kach as a friendly giant and uh, his friend whose name is chintamani who's a young boy who studies in nenital and uh, get lost and goes back in time and meet gatod kach and they become great friends um uh, so what initially happened was after having seen the two options we kind of went with a function which was uh, from the scene in a book where he meets the tokach in the forest for the first time and he's not quite sure because it's this large sort of a uh, very disproportionate burly creature who pops out of the woods at night and sort of says hello and the child is just sort of like off shot uh, so we wanted to really like capture that feeling of them having met for the first time where he in a sense meeting a monster but uh, he doesn't really know not quite sure what he's sort of getting himself into whether this person is friendly or not so we wanted to sort of capture that sort of uh, emotion so uh, we went from there we went down and i did this sort of acrylic painting of it and uh, we thought for a while that this might work and um, we showed this to a few people and they really liked it in terms of the blue and like the warmer tone contrast on either side and uh, what eventually ended up happening is that uh, when which invariably happens with any sort of uh, publication project is that there are a lot of uh, people involved there is there are editors authors marketing people uh, and me and uh, when you have a lot of people behind the scenes sort of like trying to figure out what the best way is to kind of package a product it does make the job uh infinitely more challenging and uh, that's something that we had to go back to so actually having having reached this stage we had to go back to making another line drawing and uh, sort of trying to rework how the lines would look and make the lines a little more cleaner uh, and just use dots and dashes and little curves and then went from there uh, to kind of start adding color to it and that's what we finally uh, ended up with and and it it needed it needed to have that kind of digital digital look and feel to it uh, so that the, the the color of the door cut itself could kind of again pop against this moonlit uh, night sky right so uh, so again um, that was again some of the ongoing uh, illustration work that i did and publication was one of the things i was interested in which is why i kind of took on so many projects uh the next the next two projects i'm going to show you are uh, basically projects i did for teamwork which show stylistic variety and how you can actually use different kinds of illustration to um kind of uh, enhance what one would say is the look of um, one of our events in festival and these are primarily this these are all like uh, projects which i did for uh, most of them for teamwork and and i just picked a few just to kind of uh show you how there are different ways of looking at things so the first one is um uh, goa's jazz life festival where we again started with like just doing a simple drawing and creating a mascot because that's what we wanted to do the visual language was uh being done by me and another person and um and what what ended up happening is we set on this kind of mascot and uh, we sort of at that point had the idea that we would try and use a mascot uh, for jaipur literature festival as well 
um, to have one of those central characters, which would kind of um, be the face per se of this sort of world of you know little uh, caricatures and uh, things like that. So, so this this was this was another fun one. I enjoyed working on this character. Um, it was uh, it was it was used for these jazz festivals for a couple of years. So we did a few uh, some products we made. That was how we did one of our shows. That was I think Delhi um, on the right, and uh, and this is but the next project I sort of worked on. This was this was a few years later. This was uh, uh, in two thousand seventeen. Um, it was a Buddhist festival. And uh, and this 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 is an interesting example for me to show in terms of illustration because it had a lot of elements to it which weren't specifically part of the same uh, set of illustration. They, it was it was almost like a mix between photographs, some drawings, some illustrations, and we kind of did like this uh, collage of mixed media, and it kind of looked interesting um, when it was all done. So. Much like any sort of festival work, we sort of started with a simple logo and uh, thought that we could kind of go from there and turn that into, uh, you know, working with the main logo and just taking a basic sort of sitting Buddha and a leaf and combining that into the final logo. And that finally sort of became the, became the basis for the rest of the stuff that we did. And then we took that, well, we had these photographs which we got the, uh, of this Buddha sculpture and we sort of used that and we used different combinations of it in various things that we did. Um, in a part of the film segment, so uh, from, that main, from that main illustration, again, we, we branched out into all these various uh, types of uh, um, silos that we had. So if I go by logo, you can see those petals at the bottom. So those petals were actually seven different things. There were supposed to be seven different things that we were showcasing at the festival, like uh, there was a literature segment, theater, dance, uh, music. So there were a bunch of things. There was an exhibit. Uh, so this was the film festival, which is associated with it. And again, here we had to modify it. So we actually went back to the master illustration and saw how we could try and modify those photographs and use different illustrations and different textures and kind of use that to kind of you know, uh, get a, get 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 uh, get this film festival to have its own. So John is there. John, are you there? A, a client or in this case uh, thankfully a friend of mine who has an idea and is very sure of what they want sorry i'm gonna just like uh, am i back again am i clear now just like yes okay pretty much okay so this the poll was uh, a board game which was invented by a friend of mine on the indian election um i had worked on it a little bit with him initially and then uh, he he uh, did it entirely on his own and uh, he uh, launched it uh, last year and uh, it was uh, highly successful. I'm very proud of him. Uh, this was something, so he came to me with this idea which he said that I wanted to look like um, there's this sort of busy marketplace in like Connaught Place, but it also reminds me of uh, a Joe Sacco comic. And I wanted to look like that and give me that kind of sort of, you know, texturized look and feel of just these lines and these hundreds of characters almost that you're like how you're in the game you're uh, each person is a different uh, from the, their own political party is their own political say you have to buy for a majority vote so almost uh, making it seem like each person is on this uh, central uh, pedestal is trying to uh, vie for uh, popularity and uh, then we kind of went from there and explored a few ideas and then sort of settled on uh, settled on the style which we kind of uh, really liked from uh, seeing uh, Joe Sarko's Palestine and sort of, you know, went from there and took some of those ideas and tried to incorporate that in a very like uh, old Delhi marketplace kind of setting. Um, 
and uh, sort of use that to kind of uh, bring this sort of product to life. And and I and I think it worked out really well. It uh, it sort of gave me a different uh, different thing that I could show in terms of variety and uh, move back a little bit away from um, the heavy sort of uh, picturized the photograph style much like the much like the buddhist thing that i showed you earlier uh, and uh, right so i'm just going to go now to jaipur literature festival which is which i took um, and i decided to talk about as a case study more so because it was a case study in growth for me personally and the festival i feel so it needed to have a look which evolved with it constantly and i felt that uh, while we were kind of working on it in the background i was kind of working on what we could take it and how we could take it further next and uh, thankfully i had a great team of people who uh, uh, all these colleagues who were helping me and constantly giving me ideas so it was uh, it was a fun journey so i'm going to go back now again to 2015 uh which is the first time i worked on jaipur literature festival um this was this was a year where the uh, design language was already set by an external agency so uh, we just needed to create some uh, a basic sort of products for merchandise uh, signage that kind of stuff very sort of um, peripheral thing and uh, we went with bird initially for that year because there was there were lots of like uh, sessions tailored around the theme of like uh, academics and like wildlife stuff exploring we used to be one for whether literature aspect in terms of wisdom and like go that that route or like stick to something like trying to create a mascot and uh, go that way and we 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 thought we'd initially go with the peacock Uh, as the mascot the main mascot and then we sort of moved away from that and um, and i think in uh, it was it was 2016 where uh, where uh, i went to sanjoy and uh, with a colleague of mine my boss uh, archan and uh, we sort of said you know we want to work on uh, jaipur literature festival entirely and he said you know it's it's, it's just it's just too much I, i don't see how you guys are going to manage because there are there are really so many things that you really need to look into uh whether it's uh, things that are on ground whether it's digital things whether it's whether it's things that are used by the media by film people and um and he we, we didn't really have his full faith until we sort of made multiple presentations to him and he sort of gave us this uh, green light uh, which kind of which kind of got us thinking and we were like uh, you know shit do do we got this we need to kind of do a good job of it and trying to figure out what the best way was to kind of move forward with how we could uh, tackle um, you know uh, bringing this stuff to life so initially we started again with how much like most of uh, the common thread of themes of my work have gone is to just keep it simple simple lines lots of lines simple lines effective lines um, and try and create these characters which were just these small compositions from which we sort of derive various Aap various kind of characters aur phone kar chuke hain where uh, we sort of uh, use sort of uh you know me is it working yeah it's working it's working yeah um okay so no it is something it's working it's working okay <clears throat> let me just put this uh, let me put this off um right is that helpful yeah yeah can i continue yeah please please okay so uh, so so once we had these characters we sort of uh, we got really excited where we could start uh, this was 2015 and sort of uh, use these characters and sort of take out some of them and use them sporadically in different places and uh, use them on merchandise and uh, backdrops and signage and things like that and it was really fun 
to kind of try and experiment with stuff like this. And this is something that the festival hadn't really seen before. Uh, and uh, the producers really liked it. Um, and it kind of worked for this, like having this sort of variety of characters that which was a mix between the people that you see at the festival and which also encapsulated the spirit of like the festival and Jaipur and the place and you know just the feel of feel of the ambience of uh, where it was and uh, I sort of moved on from there uh, from like 2015 to like uh, trying to evolve those characters and and what uh, sort of happened the next year was that we, we wanted to sort of step that up a notch and kind of you know fix it with like block colors and try and use those outlines to be constant but also have block colors to give some kind add some kind of depth to everything and um, this is some of the stuff we did the next year and uh, it kind of progressed slowly and in what what ended up happening was that uh, we we had so we had so many characters and we had so many thoughts and ideas by the end of it that that we just didn't have enough room to kind of like show everything and we kind of had to anyway what happened what ended up happening was that we ended up had, having to sort of downsize things um to have smaller sort of compositions of characters and that's something that that was taken even further in the years to come uh so we ended up going with these small blocks of uh, illustration and then using that uh sort of sparing slightly more sparingly but like also keeping it keeping the look a little uh, busy and frantic and um, giving it a sense of uh, still like excitement and feeling about you know the fact that it is a festival and like uh, constantly getting it uh, look like it's, it's built for something bigger than it is and, and uh, this is at which point in the background uh, GLF had launched uh, several international editions so I was kind of of uh, working on those as, and we were trying to figure out what we could find kind of do that could could be used as a kind of template which would be synonymous with each kind of uh, look for each different country that we take the take the festival to and uh, which is why I think 2019 was an interesting year because we uh, we uh, took away the outline and we did this because as the years went by I sort of realized that um, it was becoming too much for people to handle, much like uh, much like how every project has multiple background people. This project too had uh, various people who who would reuse the artwork. So there'd be a digital agency who would use them. Uh, there'd be a media agency. There'd be a PR agency, and um, it sort of uh, kind of was getting a little out of hand to kind of have everybody use them and interpret them in different ways and once you do some, once you do have a body of work like this you want to try and keep it looking a certain way because you have set a standard for yourself so we went back to kind of you know uh, trying to remove the outlines and make sort of bolder colors and then we set this color palette which we would use for um, not just the main colors but like as you can see now on the right there are some examples of how we used uh, darker analogous colors to give some more depth to each composition and um, sort of went from there. Uh, and then because we knew that not only did we have the task of sort of uh, bringing all aspects of the festival to kind of look the same, we also wanted to uh, have this sort of templatized routine for all our international editions as well. And um, that was interesting because we, we kind of had to set a look for each, each, literally each um, aspect of the markers for uh, how each component of the festival would look post that. And um, is it back? Yeah. And uh, each, so, so, so the music stage, for example, would have the similar type darker the darker sort of uh, backgrounds, that kind of thing. Um, the bloggers had the pen. Each sort of uh, sort of icon became component, essential key illustration. And then we kind of moved from there, and and we sort of uh, 
templatized our typography as well with uh, adding smaller icons to it. So just, it is sort of a different lift. Uh, um, sort of when you combine the two, you get more contemporary and minimalistic and uh, kind of kind of dialogue really while keeping uh, the essence and the color and the glamour of the festival alive, you do want it to uh, match up to being uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, relevant in the, in, 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 in the, in the, um, and that's where it kind of went and, and, and it kind of uh, sort of tried not to really limit ourselves with, uh, you know, a few things and sort of try to make the layout a little more fluid than it had been recent times so the lines a little wavier the uh, borders became a little more um, pronounced it was uh, a little more um, it, we, we, we went with this sort of almost jointed look which kind of uh, made the look of it a little more fluid and that was interesting because we could kind of uh, layers uh, illustrations within each other and then we had uh, and of course we had uh, we used that and then that look for these flat kind of color blocks to sort of move into the various illustrations we created for each city. Um, and this was interesting because we knew each city had had their own different flavor of what we wanted to show. And um, here are just some examples of what we sort of did at that time. And uh, and it's and it's and it's an interesting because when you when you when you take an idea like this and you go to um, a partner who's abroad and uh, they come back with their own suggestions and their own ideas and something they want, they, do, they don't want something to look realistic. So the people in London are, you know, oh, we want like, more simplistic trees, make them six figure trees. And uh, we were a little taken aback by, uh, we were a little taken aback by, you know, uh, how they wanted to sort of, uh, had their own kind of uh, aesthetic to it, but it was interesting because it gave us it gave us uh, options to kind of play with for you know uh, other other uh, editions and uh, and each one had their own kind of unique look to it. Uh, this was Ireland, um, and uh, slowly here we sort of decided that we would use uh, for change we would use the venue the venue building which was the lyric theater as the main illustration and uh, sort of have our audience characters in that with um, with uh, with the with, uh, with the layout so yeah it was an interesting journey we sort of uh, took a while to kind of get here until we the template going for uh, um for uh, for glf and it works as uh, sort of use that into different of, uh, we could use that in different kinds of sort of uh, layouts and uh, banners and things like that. And each country kind of had their own uh, look to it. So it was, it was an interesting uh, project to kind of work through and uh, sort of try and see how one could build the sort of again world which was the J jlf world which was still part of jaipur but it had this sort of very sort of international feel to it and um, and then we go into uh, 20 which comes back to 2020 so i think um, mid last year is when uh, we sort of we had several uh, sort of creative meetings where we were stuck between the idea of uh, doing something different um, for GLF Jaipur per se and keeping that still unique um, and uh, keeping the international uh, festivals all for uh, themselves and having that one kind of common look for it because um, ultimately it was about building a brand and uh, the most important thing about brand building is that you need to have a set way of kind of putting your communication in a way where you want it to be the most effective it can across platforms and across across uh, countries really uh, so uh, so that was the challenge really for Jaipur that year because what happened was we came back uh, um, 
mid 2019 and then we wanted it to kind of uh, evoke that sense of like uh, being part of this sort of new contemporary look but also kind of have its own feeling to it uh, and its own sort of unique style to it and that's where we kind of evolve that style for the uh, so you can see now the look we had for GLF 19 and GLF International, which is the one, the smaller figure on the left, uh, which has seen lines, uh, they're a little jagged, and it's uh, and there are fewer colors and fewer textures, and then the one in the center, which is what we finalized on from various kinds of options, which was which had more texture to it and more of this sort of grainy film grain kind of um, highlight effect to it, which is what we kind of went with. Um, what I did realize though was that again, I wanted to just not limit it to a to a to a simple grain texture, but to have various kinds of patterns that one can add to it. Because uh, again, um, uh, what happens is invariably with these things is that you're not just designing for the festival; you're designing for that a bunch of people. To, who are going to sort of reuse your work in across various platforms can do so easily and effectively, and um, so that it doesn't sort of so it doesn't sort of interfere really with with, with the look of what you want to try and uh, show. And that that's something which we were very sort of careful with. And uh, now, as you can see, the illustrations went back to being very sort of minimal, fewer characters, fewer colors. Um, Keeping it colorful, but still sort of like limiting the uh, the level of contrast that it has, and sort of keeping it to that same set of colors that we had before, and, and um, you know using those kind of patterns in places where we wanted to show different kinds of texture. So the clothes, for example, were different from the music instruments, for example. So it's so it's not just like using it for the sake of using it. You do uh, we did plan out. Um, how one would say, kind of uh, figure out where we could use it because um, again, like I said, doing these across forms and uh, not just limiting them to a screen is the challenge of doing this because you know that ultimately something like this is going to be made into a 15 foot billboard. So you don't want to lose the integrity of the artwork when that happens. And uh, we tried like, we kept it very clean and we wanted to keep it as close as possible to get sometimes because I mean what happens when you print in large format you do lose a few patterns and colors and things so we, we tried to sort of use that uh, uh, some of it to our advantage in kind in places where we could uh, sort of uh, delete those patterns for example so if you see the image on the left which has a pink arch uh, initially, we thought we'd just use it as dots, but then we realized, um, I thought that if I keep it as a flat uh, sort of pink, it would be easier to kind of represent, it would be easy on the eye when it's sort of on a stage or on a backdrop or something like that as a print or on a holding or on signage. And um, and then we just went ahead with creating these, uh, these uh, small kinds of uh, compositions which which really helped which uh, kept it simple and we wanted to kind of uh, keep it simple so that it could be reproduced easily and it just by the end of it we were just literally sort of you know we, we at that time when you're working on making uh, um, car stickers and website banners and hoardings and flyers and t-shirts you, you have there there's uh, thousands of things which you're doing uh, in in a last minute situation you want it to be easy enough for uh, you to, for you to kind of um, uh, replicate with ease and uh, have your colleagues also not uh, sort of you know abuse you and uh, sort of uh, be able to use it easily and uh, so this is something we did for music stage where we wanted to we wanted it to look uh, um, part like it was part of the GLF family but like keep those colors as the music stage colors that it had been in the previous years and um, we sort of zeroed in on these two uh, mascots which we had and expanded from that initially they were just faces and then we kind of gave them um, bodies and music instruments and sort of made it a little bit of a 
almost like a surreal fantasy kind of experience because that um, a lot of what uh, the music stage tries to bring as a evening festival uh, so in the day we have the literature segment and in the evening we have the uh, the music component and uh, and and it and it works because uh, it was it was it was deep set a lot of it, it's night time and uh, a lot of the prints uh, do come out well when you do uh, bright colors against something that's dark uh, and you want those characters to kind of show out and uh, it was uh, and it uh, worked really well so yeah so then um, moving on to some of the other stuff we did like i said uh, just just kept it kind of simple and moved into this very sort of a uh, block sort of look to most of the things we created um because by the end of it by the previous from the previous four years we actually had so many colors and arches and uh, architectural drawings and character drawings that it was just it was getting a bit much and it was getting a little confusing as to where to put what where and um, and it sort of ex- exploded at one point in 2019 and 2020 was really about like bringing that down to like just the basics of what we wanted to show and uh, we had you know our main characters we had a few animals we had books pens as characters and uh, one thing things about like some of these characters which are not exactly uh, which aren't human per se is that you're giving a uh, life to things that are in an emit and uh, and uh, the interesting things that we has uh, and doing uh, the glf stuff which had these sort of the pens and peacocks as their own kind of um sorry one sec uh, pens and peacocks as their own kinds of sort of uh characters so yeah so now i'm going to move on again and uh, these are some more basic layouts which we did so it translated into a variety of just hundreds and hundreds of things um which also is sort of helpful when you're working with uh, uh minimal components is to try and keep the keep the design language in terms of type um in terms the signage things that require uh, more clarity and uh, more visual less so the the aesthetic of the illustration where in it takes it, it's an interesting way to kind of look at it in terms of you're almost picking and choosing where you want uh, the illustration to be in the forefront and something where you want the um, the typography to be the main thing so that so there's always so you always kind of trying to find that balance in what you are sort of doing and um, this was actually uh, something we for the bag which in itself was unique because we wanted it to be separate from the look of the other thing but uh, still retain the patterns and uh, we went back to adding outlines bold outlines uh, so that it would print on uh, cloth and kind of the lighter blues and the oranges and um, again like it just just an interesting uh, study of how we sort of track to something we did uh, like for for a for a sample kind of uh, design and sort of ended up using that in our final product in a different way. so so ultimately it was it worked out really well it was something different and it um and uh, yeah i i think it was it was just an exciting experience to have looking back at how it took this evolutionary sort of uh, route to it and went through the motions of being uh, some characters to many characters to some colors to many colors and then back to colors and uh, you know just a few characters and that in itself has been an interesting experience for me to kind of continue this uh, uh, process of constantly trying to rework something that something that's always in motion and um it's uh, it's also interesting because because the festival itself uh, sort of evolves as it does and as a product and um, each year has comes with its own different theme based on uh, based on the literature that year or uh, geopolitical affairs that year so um 
So those are just things that one does keep in mind and you do try to sort of implement that to the best of your abilities. Um, these are some backdrops from, uh, from that year. And again, it was, uh, it was a case of sort of uh, trying to figure out how to make these backdrops um, also unique. And then every, every venue per se, they had their own sort of team. And that uh, is interesting when you have a team of production people to work with because you're, because you're working with people who are, um, are doing on-ground work as well. So, so, if so if your tent color is blue and your background color is uh, shades of blues and greens, you want your chairs to be a certain color, you want the, the um, decor to look a certain way. So it's really a, a very sort of, it ends up being a very sort of collaborative effort which is very kind of um, rewarding in a sense when you see that there are different people from different, very different teams, uh, the team, the sound team, the decor team, all sort of working on this collaboration. And you do end up feeding off people's ideas and sometimes you do have to change plans. And of course, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm gonna go ahead a bit, sorry. Um, as you can see now, what happens is um, often we do get, uh, sponsored venue so they have their own kind of ideas where they want a certain color to be on a certain stage so this is an example of uh, something we had for nexa uh, we had another venue which was um, sponsored by bank of Baroda, and uh, what happens is that uh, when they when when they produce the money that they do to make a festival happen you do have to sort of uh, stay true to them as well. So what ended up happening is that venue ended up being in hues of oranges and red, which was um, which was their sort of uh, brand aesthetic. So that's also something that uh, which sort of plays on constantly with these things. So yeah, that's about it. That's kind of like the journey of where we were from uh, 2000, uh, 2015, 2020 and my journey, which was 2009 to 2020. So yeah, I hope you guys like uh, whatever it is that I could sort of put together. Um, and I think we, we have some time for some questions now or something. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, guys, if you have questions, uh, we can unmute yourself and ask directly. Guys, if you have questions, ask now. Uh, no questions. I'm beginning to think I did. I uh, I must have done either a terrible job or a really good job. If they understood nothing or everything, which is also great. No, I think your work is so so interesting that it kind of made up for the slightly poor connection that I think you have at home. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a question. So, um, yeah, sure. uh, Srinidhi, it'll be nice if you can introduce yourself. Otherwise, yeah, I'm Srinidhi. I'm from uh, Visual Communications and so uh, My question, okay, so firstly, I really loved all of your works and I especially enjoyed looking at the mythological, Indian mythological characters. I was wondering what's your process behind uh, imagining and uh, drawing mythological characters because you don't see them. <laughs> so. Uh, right. Okay. So that. Uh, okay. So um, there are two. There, there are essentially two parts to it. One is uh, essentially just based on observation. Uh, things you see in your everyday. Things you like. Things you like doing. Um, if you like a certain artist or a certain illustrator. When you're young, you want to kind of replicate that aesthetic, and that's something that's important because uh, the more you try to do that, you will find your own kind of style eventually and grow into it. Uh, and the other important part about uh, mythology per se is really 
about the research that you put into it because you need to really know um, some of the stuff that you're doing. And while there is a lot of open interpretation to uh, sort of how you can show these things because, I mean, I took a very sort of uh, fictitious, almost fantasy route to it. Uh, but uh, when, when, you, when you do want to stay, stay true to something, it's best to do uh, any, any, any sort of body of uh, artwork requires uh, research and sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, looking at an understanding of what you're kind of trying to port portray because um, one of the things that I realized also when, while doing these, ed these exhibitions is uh, a few people came up to me and asked me, you know, why is, uh, why is this guy blue or why is this guy orange or, you know, something like that. He's not orange or he doesn't have, uh, you know, four hands or something. And uh, and while artistic interpretation is a great thing, you do often think about uh, people's aesthetic because uh, you we, we are also in a country where uh, people do pay a lot of attention to this kind of stuff. So it's good to be slightly sort of sensitive to where you want to go with stuff like this and. Uh, most importantly, you, you you find your you find your way, you find your style, and you work from there, and then uh, see where see where that takes you. Uh, thank you, Jan. Um, thank you, Srinidhi. Anybody else? Um, sir, I had a question too, if you don't mind. Hi, my name is Seher Kureshi, again, Semester for Visual Communication. Uh, I loved all your work and basically, uh, so my, uh, your study on human figures, even in mythology, but basically your style with human figures is very interesting and very detailed. Achieving that would have been an interesting uh, process, I must say. But for a student who's just beginning to learn about branding and etc and creating mascots and having such details to it is there a starting process i i don't know how do i how would i say it but a starting process like a where where i could begin my research on and how do i go about i mean i'm not into a lot of mythological work but just understanding more of human figures and i mean i do sketch but I have never been able to achieve that detailing work, but how do I go about with my research work? How do I research on the details that you've been able to achieve in all this? Uh, so it's essentially, uh, there are three sort of uh, basic ways of kind of looking at this. Um, one, like I said, is just uh, observation. You, you sort of see what you like in the everyday and sort of take that and use that to kind of enhance your skill. Uh, you see artists that you like, you want to you want to look at some videos, that kind of stuff, look at some movies, um, do some writing, do some reading, look at, uh, you look at picture books, you look online at references, whatever it takes. I mean, you, you first, first, the first step is to always build a body of research that you like personally, um, and then sort of go from there. So, for example, the human figures that I actually, so it was interesting for me because I had to te kind of teach myself a lot of human figure drawing. Um, and I kind of wanted to, I was always, always fascinated by um, Renaissance painting. And they have these very sort of large, broad figures in Renaissance paintings and sculptures. And I kind of wanted to evoke some of that sort of mysticism in uh, my work. And uh, and really the simple thing to do is to kind of, uh, once you have an idea of what you want your work to look like, it's really about just like, you know, uh, practicing from basic shape and like moving from there to like making it more complex. You take the simplest circle, the simplest square, and then you just do square, square, circle, circle, form a grid and uh, try and work within that grid, try and create a character, um, and then once once you get more comfortable with it, you you you'll automatically find yourself wanting to add more details to it, uh, or you see details that you wouldn't have seen earlier, like you want to sort of um, add highlights and eyes or nose or, or things like that, and like 
and then really sort of work from there. It's all really mostly about sort of staying true to what you want to achieve and kind of just practicing and sort of doing the best you can to kind of um, get there because that's something I've sort of just like had to do to kind of uh, just do the work that I do because um, really the thing is, uh, if I'm being to totally honest, um, I, I realized early on in through the, the career that I had at Teamwork, how, how many I was, so midway through that uh, illustration is something that I was interested in and I wanted to take on more projects that would give me time to do illustration uh, and not so much for graphic design work because I knew that that's something that I could do specifically. So it's always great to know what the things that you want to do that you feel like you want to put an effort and you want to be good at. So if you want to sort of, you want to do, um, you make that you make that happen for you in the sense of whether it's motion graphic or photography or fine art, you kind of use that to kind of, um, you know, forward your work and body of work and sort of almost have your work ride off that, uh, that, that sort of that thing that you want to build for yourself. And whether it's, again, yeah, like I said, whether it's drawing or animation or photography, you'll, you'll end up invariably sort of uh, using the basics uh, of those somewhere as the basis of visual communication in the future. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, John, a, a, a question has come about somebody's asking about your inspirations um, and like from where do you kind of get your inspirations when you kind of start off? Is it always about uh, your client brief? Does it always start from a client brief or uh, how does it kind of start for you? A student has kind of asked you. Uh, it's a mix of both. Um, of course, client brief in the real world is uh, the most important part of it. You want to stay true to uh, what the client wants because ultimately it's then that is going to are uh, going to use your work to uh, kind of monetize their business or their sort of career or whatever it is their product so that that is really at the center of it um, as far as inspiration goes it's really things that you see in the everyday it's uh, the movies you watch the books you read the comics you read everything that you've uh, picked up from an early age, whether it's a Tinkle or an Asterix or a Batman or whatever it is, you want to kind of, um, you want to kind of emulate that kind of body of work. Um, so it, re it really matters. I mean, like for anything that you do, I mean, even if it's uh, visual communication, you want to see, um, it's very important to look at, to look at people's work, uh, to try and see where, how the world of visual communication changes every day it changes constantly you have to constantly adapt to it and uh, the inspiration really comes from having the opportunity to look around you and sort of see what the best of the best of color uses the best of typography is the best of layout is um, and then sort of try and you know in integrate that into your into your work and and do the best that you can um, to have to give yourself that leeway and creative freedom to give the client something different every time and still sort of have your own unique sensibility to it because otherwise at the end of the day, if you're just doing, um, if you're just creating illustrations or you're creating something uh, like, a, like a report or a poster for someone, uh, anyone can do those things. So you want to kind of keep your unique look to it because you, you want to have, uh, have people remember you for what you can do differently. And that's really, that's really the crux of how you use the uh, inspiration from anything around you to kind of um, build work, for me at least. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, the next question, and probably the last one, Kunal is asking, um, is there a way to balance colors according to the mood of the illustrations? Like, what are your tips on how how one can actually balance colors, how, 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 the, how colors kind of play a role in setting the tone of the illustration. Right, so it, um, it's, a, it's an interesting one because um, it does, it does uh, work in various ways when you're trying to 
in a world right now where we have so many things that can be done um, digitally and that can solve themselves digitally, uh, you sort of need to kind of understand the basis of uh, really the theme of what you want to portray first. So if there is a definite theme um, that you have in mind that is something that has been decided or that's something that is a collective decision between you or a client or a colleague, uh, that's something that you have to work on from there. So now what happens is an illustration sort of can only take form once you know what the theme of what you want is. Uh, and once you have that, then adding the color becomes slightly easier in, in terms of um, building that kind of uh, look to it. So it really depends on knowing the kind of uh, theme that you want to sort of bring to life, whether it's something that's uh, dark or something that's happy and fun or something that's a cool sort of thing for, because it, it varies between, it'll constantly vary between projects. And I think one of the amazing things about the projects at Teamwork that I've worked on is that no single project is ever the same. And each festival really has its own kind of look and feel and its own kind of uh, visual identity. Um, and that's, that's unique because, because you're not stuck to doing the same thing in a sort of monotonous kind of way. And there are always new ways of looking at different festivals because each one has, a, has its own identity and you want to kind of stay true to that. And uh, color is a great way actually of kind of um, making that happen uh, to try and see what kind of tones you can put together and then work from there. And it's always great to uh, simplify your tone start with a single tone, a monotone, and then go from like two, three, and then multiply that, make it six, and then sort of work out with like, with like simple, there are two ways to do it. You can do it with contrast colors or with analogous colors. So it really depends um, on how much emphasis you want to give that particular part of your illustration through color. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. Um, guys, I hope no more questions. Um, so, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Um, Srinidhi, would you like to do the honors, please? Yeah. Um, thanks a lot for talking to us and uh, sharing all of your work with us. I think it was very inspiring for all the illustrators who are a part of this uh, this video call. And uh, thank you, sir, for organizing this as well with us. It was very interesting. Um, Good, cool. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I'm Ujan. I'm guessing a lot of um, the students would be um, following you in Instagram or something like that today uh, to see more uh -huh. of your work. Yeah, I'm sure if anyone has any questions, they can always mail me yeah. or get in touch or something like that. I'd be more than happy to uh, help. I am working on a very interesting project at the moment, which is, uh, I mean, I guess this is the last thing one can really say when you, when, is to sort of end on a note, which is uh, any work that you kind of do, it, 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 it's great that you have, that you want to turn uh, visual communication into a career uh, as far as these being students is, and you will do well, of course, in, in life. But uh, it, it, it's, it's also very important to have, uh, you want to do um, something that you're passionate about. So I am actually working on a graphic novel that I've never done before. And uh, that's interesting for me because it's new and uh, we should always try and do new things to sort of do what we're passionate about. And that's the best what I can kind of uh, say. So thanks, yeah, it's been fun. Um, okay. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much, Ujan.